Do you know that you can save for a comfortable retirement and save taxes at the same time? Yes, you heard that right. Investing for a comfortable life after retirement is crucial if you want to maintain your current living standards even after you retire. Now, how about an investment which saves taxes and also ensures that you enjoy a stress-free retirement? When it comes to tax planning, you must choose an investment which helps you to achieve your financial goals as well as save on taxes. After all, a rupee saved in taxes is a rupee earned, right? Hello and welcome. I am Prarthana from Clear, India's largest financial services platform. And in today's video, I will tell you everything about the National Pension System or NPS and how it will not only save taxes but also help you accumulate a corpus for your retirement. Subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to get notifications on our latest videos. The National Pension System or NPS is a government-sponsored pension scheme open to all citizens of India on 1st of May 2009. All Indian citizens who are between the age of 18 to 70 years can join the NPS. You can continue with the NPS till you are 75 years old and avail the tax benefits. You can subscribe to the NPS if you are salaried, self-employed or even a non-resident Indian or NRI. Employers can also offer NPS to their employees. The Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority or PFRDA regulates and manages the NPS. There are eight pension fund managers under NPS and subscribers must choose one of them to manage their investment in the NPS. These are the eight pension fund managers under NPS. Firstly, Birla Sun Life Pension Management Limited, then HDFC Pension Management Company Limited, then ICICI Prudential Pension Funds Management Company Limited. Kotak Mahindra Pension Fund Limited, then LIC Pension Fund Limited, Reliance Capital Pension Fund Limited, SBI Pension Funds Private Limited, and UTI Retirement Solutions Limited. You can invest in NPS after completing your KYC or Know Your Customer Norms. You can open your NPS account at POPs or points of presence such as public and private sector banks, post offices and some financial institutions. You can access the website of the PFRDA to find the nearest point of presence and open the NPS account. Subscribers to the NPS must fill up the subscriber registration form and submit it at the point of presence along with documents showing proof of identity, address and date of birth. All NPS subscribers are issued a card with a 12-digit unique number called PRAN or Permanent Retirement Account Number. You are not allowed to open multiple NPS accounts. However, you don't need to open a second NPS account as it is portable across locations. You have two different accounts under the NPS called the Tire 1 and Tire 2 account. The Tire 1 is the retirement account which offers many tax benefits. You cannot withdraw your NPS contributions until the age of superannuation or till you attain the age of 60. Moreover, there are restrictions on complete withdrawal from the Tire 1 account even after retirement. The Tire 1 account is mandatory when opening your NPS account. The Tire 2 account is a voluntary account and you can take out the money anytime you want. You can open the NPS Tire 2 account only if you have a Tire 1 account by filling out the application form. You have to contribute a minimum amount of Rs 1000 to your Tire 1 account in a financial year. 
Moreover, you will have to contribute rupees 500 when you open the tier 1 account. If you do not make the minimum contribution, your account will be frozen. However, you can unfreeze your account by visiting the POP and making a payment of the minimum contribution together with a penalty of rupees 100 for the years of freeze. Investments in the NPS are deployed under broad asset classes. Firstly, equity or E, which invests predominantly in equity market instruments. Then corporate debt or C, which invests in bonds issued by public sector undertakings, public financial institutions and money market instruments. Thirdly, government securities or G, which invests in securities issued by the central and state governments and money market instruments. Then alternate instrument or investment funds or A, which invests in real estate investment trusts or REITs and alternate investment funds. The NPS offers two investment choices called the active choice and the auto choice. Investors can decide how much money should be invested in different asset classes of E, C, G and A. However, there are limitations on the maximum permissible allocation towards equities at 75%. For auto choice, it is a default option where money is invested in different asset classes of E, C, G and A depending on the age of the subscriber. You have a lifestyle based approach with a higher allocation towards equity when the subscriber is of a younger age. It systematically reduces the allocation towards equity when the subscriber approaches retirement age. The lifestyle-based approach optimizes return and cushions the portfolio against market volatility as you approach the retirement. The investments under the auto choice are made in three life cycle funds and subscribers can choose from three options. Moderate life cycle fund, it is a default option where equity allocation is up to 50%. Conservative life cycle fund, it follows a conservative approach to investing where the maximum allocation towards equity is capped at 25%. And aggressive life cycle fund, where the maximum equity allocation goes up to 75%. I hope by now you have understood how NPS works and how to invest in it. Don't you think that you should invest in the NPS to build a corpus for your retirement? If yes, then please write yes in the comment section below. Now moving on, let us understand if you can withdraw from the NPS before maturity and of course the tax benefits it offers to salaried and self-employed people. NPS is a pension product and you will have to stay with your investment till you are 60 years. When you are 60 years of age, you have the option to withdraw 60% of the corpus as a lump sum tax free. However, you will have to use the remaining 40% of the corpus to build an annuity plan from the PFRDA listed insurance company. An annuity plan offers regular income at a specified rate for a period chosen by the subscriber to get income after retirement. If you exit the NPS before you are 60 years old, you can withdraw only 20% of the accumulated corpus as a lump sum and you must use the remaining 80% of the corpus to purchase an annuity plan. If the subscriber dies before 60 years, the accumulated corpus is paid to the nominee or the legal heir of the subscriber. Firstly, your investment in the NPS Tier 1 account qualifies for a tax deduction up to Rs 1.5 lakh per year under Section 80C of the Income Tax Act 1961. An employee's own contribution towards the NPS account qualifies for a tax deduction up to 10% of the basic salary plus dearness allowance under Section 80CD1 of the IT Act within the overall ceiling of 1.5 lakh permitted under Section 80C. 
a self employed person can also contribute a maximum 20% of his or her gross income towards the nps account and claim a deduction under section 80cd1 of the it act salaried employees can also claim tax deduction if an employer contributes towards nps privately employed employees can claim to 10% of their basic salary plus dearness allowance of 14% in case of central government employees under section 80cd2 of the it act the important thing to note is that the deduction available under section 80CT2 is over and above the limit of rupees 1.5 lakh and 80CD1B. However, Finance Act 2020 has capped the employer's contribution to PPF, NPS, and superannuation fund at 7.5 lakh as non taxable prerequisite. Only contribution towards the NPS Tire 1 account qualify for tax deductions. You have Section 80CD1 and Section 80CD2 as a part of Section 80C. Many salaried employees subscribe to the NPS because it gives a tax deduction in addition to the rupees 1.5 lakh per year under Section 80C. Individuals can claim an additional tax deduction up to rupees 50,000 per year under Section 80CD1B. NPS also qualifies for the triple E or exempt, exempt, exempt tax status. The NPS tax exemption extends to the investment amount growth of the corpus and you can withdraw 60% of the accumulated corpus at maturity tax free. However, you must compulsorily invest 40% of the remaining corpus in an annuity plan where the annuity income is taxed as per your income tax bracket. The PFRDA has allowed NPS subscribers to withdraw the entire accumulated pension wealth at retirement without having to purchase an annuity plan if the pension corpus is up to rupees 5 lakhs. The earlier limit was rupees 2 lakhs. Poor yields from annuity plans and high inflation rates mean pensioners get hardly any income from these plans. Moreover, annuity income is taxed as per your tax bracket, which could mean negative returns from annuity plans. Salaried individuals prefer NPS because it offers a tax deduction beyond Section 80C. It also offers you the opportunity to invest in equity which can offer inflation beating return over time, thereby helping you build a corpus for your retirement. So guys, did you receive some valuable information through this video? If yes, then please hit the like button and share this video with your friends and family who might find this useful. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification on so that you're notified every time we upload a tax-related video. Stay tuned, stay happy and take care.